Hello children. Hi children. Walking with Jesus, walking every day, walking all the way, walking with Jesus, walking with Jesus today, walking in the sunshine, walking in the rain, walking every day, walking all the way, walking in the sunshine, walking in the rain, Walking with Jesus today. Praying with Jesus. Praying every day. Praying all the way. Praying with Jesus. Praying with Jesus today. Praying in the sunshine, praying in the rain, praying every day, praying all the way. Praying in the sunshine, praying in the rain, praying with Jesus today. You are the children of God, so do not be afraid. Jesus is watching over you day and night. Jesus loves you very much. children welcome to Sunday Club. Last week we were talking about Jacob and how he escaped the wrath of his brother Esau. Now Jacob is in his uncle's house living with his uncle and his family. He has served his uncle faithfully for a month and then his uncle said my nephew look you cannot work for me for free we need to negotiate. I know how I should pay you. Now, Jacob had met Rachel and fallen in love with Rachel. He thought, wow, if I could marry this woman, I'll be happy. So he said to his uncle, look, the only thing I want is if you give me permission to marry your daughter, Rachel. I would work for seven years for you for the hand of Rachel in marriage. See, Jacob loved Rachel so much. So seven years didn't seem such a long time to him. Uh, Laban was really happy. He thought, oh wow, I've got La um, this man to work for me now. Seven years, no worries. So Jacob worked really happy knowing that seven years he will be married to the love of his life. Therefore, after seven years came to pass, the wedding, feast and ceremony was organized and there you go, um, Laban organized the feast, it was a big feast and Jacob in his head was thinking, yes! I'm going to be married to Rachel, my love, and he was so happy, he was looking forward to it. At the end of the feast, Laban said to Jacob, let me take you to your wife in your tent. Laban had tricked him. He had taken Leah to the tent and said to Jacob, here is your wife. Jacob being tired and not really paying too much attention, was happy. and then went to bed and the following morning he woke up and who was by his side Leah not Rachel Jacob was angry he was furious Laban has tricked me what sort of uncle is this that tricks his, tricks his nephew and there it was Jacob went to his uncle very angry uncle how did you trick me you promised me Rachel how come it's Leah that you've given me well well my nephew don't be upset in our tradition here the younger daughter does not get married before the older daughter so 
Leah had to be married before Rachel. But but that's not what I asked. That's not. Then they would say, "Don't worry, my nephew. You can have Rachel as well. But you must work for me for another seven years. <gasps> seven years." But you can have Rachel in a week's time. In a week's time, I will organize another week uh, fe wedding feast and you and Rachel can be married. Laban agreed. So, seven days later, Rachel was given to Jacob as his wife. Now he has two wives. And the two sisters lived with Jacob as his wives. And Leah had was having lots of, lots of sons and Poor Rachel didn't have any, but and they both they all live in. They're quite happy, and Jacob now thought, "I've got all these children. I've got my wives. Now I need to leave." Levin did not want Jacob to leave, and Jacob said, "Look, Levin, I want to leave. I want to go back to my father's land where I pro where my God has promised my father." Laban was worried and Jacob said look I'll work for you for some time and you will pay me by giving me all the black sheep and the sheep with speckles or stripes and the other sheep that were left will be yours and Laban thought mm, okay I agree so by that night when Jacob went to bed Laban and his sons went and took out all the black, black sheep speckled or striped sheep away from the flock leaving only the white ones and Jacob woke up and saw what Levin has done he said wow this man has tricked me again what am I going to do but God was with him Jacob would breed the white sheep by facing them towards a certain um, foliage and this sheep would give birth to speckled or striped or black sheep again so over time, he collected a lot of black sheep and speckled sheep and then separated them from Levin's white sheep and said to his wives, come on, it's time for us to go. So that one night when Levin wasn't watching or thinking, Jacob got his wife and children and they left. Levin came and saw that Jacob had gone. He was furious. So he got his sons and his slaves and servants and they chased after Jacob. They chased him for seven days and eventually on the seventh night before they caught up with Jacob, Levin had a vision and a vision God said to Levin, do not harm Jacob, do not curse him, do not touch a hair on his head. And Levin was afraid. So that morning he met with Jacob. He was about to hang Jacob, then he remembered what God had said to him. Do not hang Jacob. Do not touch Jacob. Do not curse Jacob. So Levin said to him, why did you steal from me and run in the middle of the night, taking my children and my grandchildren without telling me? And Jacob said, no, I did not steal from you. I only took what belongs to me. These are my children. These are my wives. So. And these are my sheep, as we agreed. And Levin said to Jacob, God said I mustn't harm you, so I'm going to let you go. And Jacob said, Well, thank you. That's I thank you that you know there is a God that protects the weak from the strong. So this is a monument here. Let us agree and that agree not to harm each other at this monument, okay? So they made an agreement and a vow to each other that they would never cross that monument or cross that line to harm or do anything to each other. So they both went their way. Now Jacob was going back to his land and he was so worried that if he met with his brother Esau again, Esau would remember what harm he had done. Remember! that Jacob tricked Esau and stole his birthright but Esau actually gave Jacob the birthright for a bowl of soup so it, technically maybe it's not stealing but it was trickery and so Jacob was really worried because he knew that his brother was really really angry with him when he left 
and so he sent some servants forward to go and give gifts to Esau so that when he met with Esau, Esau would not be so angry with him and Esau would accept him. And on the way, one night while he was sleeping and getting ready to meet with his brother, he had a dream. And in the dream, he wrestled with a man and he could not see the face of this man and he wrestled with the man and the man asked him what's your name he said Jacob and the man trashed him and they had a big fight and Jacob grabbed the man and held him and said I will not let you go I said what's your name he said Jacob what's your name Jacob and then the man said to him from now on your name will not be Jacob but Israel for you are no longer a deceiver Israel? Yes, your name will be Israel from now on. Father of nations. And Jacob was astounded. I will not let you go until you bless him. He said, I blessed you. Your name is now Israel. And the following day, not long that old, they met up with Esau. And Esau embraced him. I was quite happy to see his brother. And they made up. And Esau and Jacob did not fight each other. They all went back to their fatherland. What we learn from that is that no matter what we do in life, so long as we're sorry and ask God for forgiveness and ask God to show us where, which way to go and how to live lives for Him, God will always keep His promises for our lives and our destinies. Thank you very much for listening. Hope. You will go out and do your best, believing and knowing that God will always keep his promise to bless us. Hi children, I'm going to sing a song called God is for me and you can sing and dance along to it, that would be great. Um, because we've been learning about Jacob and Jacob made a promise and his promise to God was if you will be with me and protect me he said and bring me home safely then you will be my God it says that in the Bible so uh, enjoy singing the song with me and dancing looking out is a great big world where do I go where do I fit in Gotta keep this one thing on my mind Maker of all the universe is on my side If God is for me, who can be, who can be against me? If God is for me, who can be, who can be against me? He is my strength, he is my friend forever God is for me, who can be who can be against me? Looking out, it's a great big world. Where do I go? Where do I fit in? Gotta keep this one thing on my mind. The maker of all the universe is on my side If God is for me, who can be, who can be against me? If God is for me, who can be, who can be against me? He is my strength, he is my friend forever God is for me, who can be, who can be against me? God is for me. God is for me. When I just don't understand. When life doesn't go the way I planned. When God is for me. When God is for me. Who can be? Who can be against me? And God is for me. Who can be? Who can be against me? He is my strength. He is my friend forever. God is for me. Who can be? Who can be against me? Who can be? Who can be against me?
against me, God is for me. Who can be? Who can be against me? God bless you. Welcome to the story about Jacob. What we can take from that uh, is that God does have a plan for all lives. And as we learn to trust and rely on him more and more, those plans that he has, they will be revealed to us. Well, let us know about a little chat with our father of God. Put your hands together and let's look up. Heavenly Father, as I look towards you, I would like you to know that I am ready to be led by you. Yet, I'm ready to follow you. So teach me your ways so that I, as your child, will achieve the plans you have for my life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Take care. Bye.